Because of the differences in the user interface and the presets in 3ds Max and 3ds Max design, we will set up a consistent interface that will work for both versions. We will want to use the 3ds Max with Mental Ray interface. This gives us the clean interface with many presets removed so that we can work with the basic 3ds Max interface. It will also give us no real-world mapping. And if you've heard anything about mapping, you might think, well, real-world mapping? That's supposed to be the best and easiest way to go. Sure, real-world mapping is easy, but it's important to understand what's going on behind the scenes so you know how mapping works. Because not every texture you apply to an object is going to use real-world mapping. For these lessons, we want to be using the Mental Ray Renderer. This is the most advanced renderer that ships with 3ds Max. It can render highly realistic images and is fairly fast when it comes to rendering. And it's important that you learn how to use this renderer. Take a look at the viewports in the 3ds Max interface. You'll notice that they're not taking up the entire screen. That's because the command panel is taking up a column on the very right side of your viewport real estate. When working with 3ds Max, there are many times when you want to work with a little bit more screen room. A feature in 3ds Max is the ability to minimize the command panel so that it sits on the very right side or left side of the screen and only opens when you run your cursor over it. This can be handy when you're working with large models, you don't have a dual screen setup, and you want to gain as much modeling space as possible. In the 3ds Max interface, place your cursor at the top of the command panel so the icon looks like an arrow with a small double box. Right-click and select Minimize from the menu. This will cause the command panel to roll up to the right side and provide a few more inches of screen real estate. If having the command panel rolled up is not something that you really want to use, especially if you're learning the program, it can be redocked to the left or right. Go ahead and do this by placing your cursor over the command panel so it flies out. This is going to have to be done fairly quickly because it will want to roll back up. Go to the top where the cursor changes, right-click, then click on Float. This will float the command panel. Now, right-click on the top of the Command Panel dialog, select the Dock tool from the menu, and select Right. This will re-dock the Command Panel back to the right side. Here, we're going to change the user interface and the default presets. Before we change these settings, it's important to back up the current UI configuration. This will be insurance just in case you make an unwanted change to the user interface and want to restore the current settings. From the main menu, click on the Customize Menu tool. And in the drop-down menu, click on the Save Custom UI Scheme. This opens the Save Custom UI Scheme dialog. If the dialog does not open into the UI directory, you'll need to navigate to it. Take a look at the Save In tree to locate the UI directory. If you do not have privileges to write to the UI directory, you can place the file on your desktop or in another convenient location. Type in the file name My UI Scheme and click Save. In the Custom Scheme dialog that pops up, make sure that all the options are checked and that the icon type is set to Light. Click OK to save the UI scheme. Now to set the presets and layout. From the main menu, click on the Customize tool. And in the drop-down, click on Customize UI and Default Switcher. When you click, it brings up a new dialog with a number of options for configuring the initial settings for the tools and the user interface scheme. 
If you look in the left column, we have several options for the initial settings. We can set the configuration for standard max with the scanline renderer, or standard max with mental ray as the renderer. And there are similar options for the design viz tool. In this case, click on max.mentalray. If you want to learn a little bit more about what each setting changes in 3ds Max, you can click on the setting and it will show you in the informational window. Take some time and read through what's being set for each of the tool options. If you scroll down through the window, you'll see information about the many options that are being changed within the 3ds Max interface. Make sure that in the UI schemes, you have the default UI selected. That will give us the default coloring and icons for the lessons. Once you have the two options selected, click the Set button. It will take a few seconds to load the custom UI scheme. Then it will present you with a dialog that lets you know that the default settings will take effect the next time you restart 3ds Max. Click OK to dismiss this dialog. And we're all done with the setup for Chapter 1. We're all now working with the same interface and the same presets, so there should be no surprises. Go ahead and close 3ds Max, reopen it, and you're ready to move on.